Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I share these what's for dinner videos every week to give you guys some motivation to cook more for your family and to give you guys some ideas. If you're watching today's video on Sunday, it is Mother's Day and I just wanted to take a moment to say happy Mother's Day to all you moms watching. All of you moms out there are awesome. Just know that you're doing a good job, especially during this time that we're living through right now. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. We're starting off Friday night with a pizza night slash stromboli night. I made a stromboli for me and Andy and I made a pizza for the kids. For the stromboli, I used the same pizza dough that I use for our pizza and I've talked about it like probably a million times. It's the fail proof pizza dough. I will leave a link to the blog post where I found it down below. It is so good and super easy. I would definitely recommend not baking it on parchment paper though because this cooks at 500 degrees. So don't be like me. Don't use parchment paper. I ended up having to take off the parchment paper halfway through because I thought it was going to catch on fire. So don't do that. But I've got my dough for my stromboli rolled out into like a rectangle shape and I'm spreading some sauce on and I leave like a little bit of a section on the side so that when I roll it up I can seal the stromboli and I've got I'm putting some sauce on there and some cheese mozzarella and provolone and then pepperoni and some hard salami and then I'm just gonna roll that up score it with a knife and brush some egg on it For the kids pizza, I just took that same dough and spread it out of my pan and I've been liking to parbeak the crust. So I cook it for three minutes at 500 and then I pull it out and I put all the toppings on it. We're doing just spaghetti sauce and mozzarella cheese and pepperoni. And then I put it back in the oven for like another seven minutes. So like a total of 10 minutes. I love this dough because it cooks at high heat, but really fast, like 10 minutes. I cooked the stromboli for the same amount of time. It was done in 10 minutes. Okay, here are the kids' plates with their pizza. And this one is Lily's with tomatoes, carrots, and cucumber. This one is Elijah's with a little bit of salad, carrots, and cucumber. And then here are mine and Andy's with the stromboli. We'll probably get a little bit of extra sauce to dip it in since there's not a ton of sauce inside. Then this is mine, salad with tomatoes, cucumbers, and some shredded carrot, olive garden dressing, and Parmesan cheese. And then Andy's is the same, he just doesn't have cucumbers. And that is going to be dinner for Friday. It is Saturday and tonight for dinner I cook some stuff on the grill. I actually made a different video. It was a what we eat all weekend and it went up on Friday. So if you wanna see how we made this, go ahead and check out that video. It'll be linked down below. We've got barbecue chicken, corn on the cob, and some zucchini. And obviously because Elijah doesn't like zucchini, he has salad. We are eating outside tonight. For Sunday night's dinner, we had an easy one pot shrimp alfredo. I've shared this recipe in the past, but using chicken instead of shrimp. And this is another recipe that I shared in more detail in my last video that went up on Friday, the what we ate this weekend. So if you want more in depth, it'll be over in that video, but I will also leave the ingredients and everything listed below in the description box. But I just made that and some roasted broccoli for dinner on Sunday. For Monday night's dinner, we had a super simple spaghetti dinner. I had this jar of spaghetti sauce in the freezer from a couple weeks back when I made homemade sauce and I wanted to doctor it up a little bit. So I'm adding in a can of tomato paste, some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some Italian seasoning. 
And then I also decided later that I had some pizza sauce left over from pizza night that I wanted to use up. So I dumped that in as well. And then I just made a box of thin spaghetti noodles and that was our dinner. It is Tuesday, it is Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo. So tonight for dinner, I decided to do the quesadillas that I had on the meal plan, just because if we hadn't had them yet. And we rarely ever actually participate in like Taco Tuesday. We, it's like rarely works out that way. But tonight, as I said, quesadillas and I am boiling some potatoes right now to make some copycat Taco Bell cheesy Fiesta potatoes. I tried a recipe a while back it didn't work out the greatest, so I'm trying a new one today. And for this one, I am starting off by boiling the potatoes. So I washed these five potatoes, and I've got them in there with some water, covering them about an inch over the potatoes. And I'm going to bring this to a boil and cook them for 15 to 20 minutes until they are semi-tender, not all the way tender, like we're not making mashed potatoes. We just want them to be starting to get soft and then we will drain them, cut them up and put them in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this get started. While I work on this, I will show you the clips from the other night when I cooked the chicken. Okay, if you watched my What I Ate This Weekend video, you saw this chicken and I was supposed to cook it on the grill and then save it for a quesadilla night. But then I ended up accidentally putting out the coals with the zucchini, so I wasn't able to cook this chicken. So I marinated it with some oil and some taco seasoning and some lemon juice. And since I couldn't cook it on the grill, I decided to just throw it in the air fryer. So I put it in there on 400 degrees and cooked it, I think, a total of 30 minutes. And I flipped it at about 15 minutes. Okay, while my potatoes are boiling, I'm going to mix together the stuff for the coating. I'm going to use four tablespoons of flour, half a cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of paprika, three teaspoons of salt, a dash of cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and then the recipe didn't call for this, but I think it needs a little bit of cumin. The last recipe I did had cumin in it, and I think that it should have just a little bit of cumin. So I'm going to do a dash of cumin as well. Okay, potatoes are done. I cooked mine for 20 minutes and they are just tender enough to where I can stick the fork in them just a little bit. They're still pretty firm. They are very hot. I'm going to do my best not to burn myself while I cut these into bite-sized pieces.
Okay, now I have my oven preheated to 425 and I have two sheet pans out. I don't know if I'm going to need both, but just in case, because we don't want these to be super crowded on the pan, so I might divide it in between the two. And then these are going to cook for 25 to 35 minutes. Okay, so I definitely used both sheet pans. I just tried to make sure none of them were touching. So as I said, into the oven these are going to go for 25 to 35 minutes. If y'all were sitting there thinking, dang, that's a lot of extra coating on those potatoes. Why is there so much extra coating? It's because I forgot a potato. I started off with five potatoes boiling in the water. Apparently, I didn't pull them all out and I went to go take the water out of the pot and there was still a potato in there. How did I miss a whole potato? I don't know, but I did. So now I have this semi-cooked potato. I, I don't even know. Okay, and here are our plates. These are the kids, and then this one is mine. I have the sour cream on my potatoes, and unfortunately, Andy is back to work today. They decided to open the store again, so no more family dinners. He'll be working past dinner time most nights. Hmm, kind of sad, but it is what it is. That is the retail life. Um, I will be sure to leave a message here on the screen letting you know if we like these potatoes. But that is going to be our Taco Tuesday. Okay, update on the potatoes that we had for dinner. They're not good. Me and the kids did not care for them. Um, I don't know if it's because I forgot to put the other potato in there so there was too much coating. Or just like it's not good. It tastes really powdery like either there was too much cornstarch or too much flour or too much of both. I don't know. It, it wasn't good. They were almost good. Like the flavor was good. But then they had like this powdery taste. So don't try that recipe. But the seasonings are good. So what I did was that other potato that I forgot about. I took and I seasoned with the seasoning. So the paprika, the cayenne, the salt, the pepper, and a little bit of cumin. And tossed in some olive oil and those seasonings. And put it in the air fryer. No flour, no cornstarch. And I roasted that up for Andy. So he's got some nice crispy potatoes to have with his quesadilla. And then some nacho cheese on top. But yeah, do not recommend no. those potatoes. Okay, it is Wednesday and tonight for dinner we are going to be having cowboy beans. This recipe originally comes from Just and the Boys. Whenever I make it I always link their video down below so make sure you check that out. I love them. They always come up with great recipes. I will also have the ingredients like listed below for you guys. But I'm starting off by browning some bacon. It's only half of a pack of bacon and I'm just gonna get that nice and crispy. And while that's doing that, I'm gonna make some biscuits for dinner tonight. I'm making copycat red lobster biscuits. So for this, you just need some Bisquick or fake Bisquick. This is the Walmart one. Some milk and some cheese. And then at the end, when they come out of the oven, you will need some garlic powder and some melted butter. So I'm gonna take two cups of the Bisquick Two thirds of a cup of milk and about half a cup of the cheddar. Mix it together and then we're gonna drop that on our baking sheet. And it's going to bake on 450 degrees for six to eight minutes. And then as I said, we will brush some melted butter and garlic powder on them. I'm gonna do half a cup of butter and a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder and brush that on them when they are done.
Okay, and here is our dinner along with the rolls and the cowboy beans. We have some cut up cucumber. And you may have noticed that I used white sharp cheddar cheese as my cheese and my rolls. And that's why they don't have that like orangey look that traditional red lobster biscuits have because I didn't use like yellow or orange cheese. Um, but I'm sure they're still gonna taste great with that extra sharp white cheddar. But that is going to be dinner for Wednesday. As I said at the beginning, Make sure you go check out Jess's channel because they are always coming up with great recipes. It is Thursday and tonight for dinner I am modifying this Dijon dill pork tenderloin recipe from the Instant Pot step-by-step -step cookbook by Pressure Luck. If I can find a video on this, I'm not sure if he has one, I will link it down below. If not, I will have this cookbook link down below. But he uses a pork tenderloin, he says not to use a pork loin but I'm modifying it for a pork loin because that's what I have on hand. So I have this, it's like two and a half to three pounds. So I'm basically following his instructions, but I'm adjusting the cooking time because this is bigger and I'm not gonna cut it into little medallions. I am going to sear this on the saute function. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there and sear it on all sides. And then we will get started with the rest of the recipe following his directions. Once I had the pork tenderloin seared, I went ahead and poured in the chicken broth and then I used that to kind of deglaze the bottom of the pan and scrape up any bits that might have stuck. And then I added in a fourth a cup of Dijon mustard 
and kind of spread that all over the pork and mix some of it into the chicken broth. I cooked this on manual pressure for 15 minutes and did a 15 minute natural release. As I said, this is different than his instructions because mine is a bigger piece of meat. Once the pork tenderloin was done and I opened the Instant Pot, I removed the pork tenderloin and turned on the saute function. And then to that, I'm going to add some more Dijon mustard, some lemon juice, some dill, and some cornstarch mixed with water to kind of thicken up that sauce. And then I sliced up my pork tenderloin and added it back in. Okay, to go with our pork chops for dinner tonight, I made a can of green beans. I put a little bit of chicken bouillon in there, some pepper and some garlic and a little bit of butter. And then this is a box of rice pilaf from Aldi. I just followed the microwave instructions and made it really, really easy. It took like 15 minutes in the microwave and that was it. So here is my plate. I also made a loaf of homemade bread earlier today. So we've got some of that and then our pork chop. And here are the kids' plates. What one's mine? And I will be sure to leave a note here on the screen letting you know how we like these Dijon dill pork chops. Update on the pork chops. Me and the kids actually really, really liked them. Like the Dijon with the dill was just a really good flavor combination in our opinion. But Andy said he, there was just something about it he didn't like. Like maybe it was too much Dijon mustard. Not really sure. So I probably won't really make this recipe again. Um, yeah. But I, I think it was good. If you like Dijon and dill, I think you should definitely try it because we, we liked it. But that is going to wrap up this week's What's for Dinner. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Any recipes I mentioned will be linked down below. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!